I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House. This week curated living from coast to coast, including this vibrant Santa Monica home. And we visit this timeless townhouse on New York's Upper East Side. You are not going to want to miss this architectural gem in Aspen. Plus this Feng Shui inspired home in the financial district designed to make you feel joy every step of the way. But before all of that, we are at the newly renovated, music-inspired Los Angeles home of designer Holly Conlon. Welcome to my home. It's all behind this gate. Come on in. Welcome to Open House. This week I'm coming to you from this one-of-a-kind duplex in the famed American Thread Building in New York's Tribeca neighborhood. This home is the perfect blend of traditional downtown loft living and uptown luxury. The open concept main floor is an entertainer's dream space with plenty of areas to lounge and relax or mix and mingle, depending on your mood, plus a dining area and a kitchen to match. Check out these distinct architectural details like these ionic columns and massive arched windows. It's a wow factor every time you open the front door. The serene principal suite occupies the entire upstairs and is the perfect place to wind down at the end of a long day. It's one of five bedrooms in this 3,800 square foot home. Let's get started in the Eagle Rock section of Los Angeles with designer Holly Conlin, co-founder and principal of Wake and Loom Design. She shows us around her own fully renovated home that's filled with unique style and easy charm and music. Take a look. Hi guys, my name is Holly Conlin and I am an interior designer and co-owner of Wake and Loom Interior Design. But today is less about work and more about my house, so welcome to my home. It's all behind this gate. Come on in. Welcome to my living room. This is one of my favorite spaces in the house because it's so beautifully and naturally lit. There are these huge windows that bring in so much beautiful light and it's a really neat thing because this is a small house and the living room is a small room, but because of the windows, it sort of extends the room out to the outdoors. It's really kind of special. So on top of being an interior designer, I'm also a musician. So it was really important to me to have music be kind of the centerpiece of the living room room, which is why we have my piano here. On the other side of the living room is sort of our main sitting area, and just beyond it is the deck, which is also our dining room. And it's also a great place to sit out with friends and watch the sunset, and it's just kind of a magical spot. When I got this house, the kitchen was a little dated, and so we ripped that out, and we decided to go with light, bright, and white. We went with a nice cream cabinetry with a light grain and a lot of brass accents. We went with open shelving, which is a really great way to display your pretty things. And we did a herringbone pattern tile throughout, floor to ceiling, where it could be just to kind of lead the eye up and make the space feel a little bit bigger. Our sconces, they're custom made, and they're just a really unique shape and they bring a really nice glow. So throughout the house, we have a lot of plants, even here in the kitchen. They just bring the outside in, which is actually a very natural thing for this house because we have so much of a view of the outdoors. It's just kind of a nice sort of rhythm to have a lot of plants inside as well. So now here we are in our primary bedroom. It's just a soft little space and we have these beautiful windows that show the greenery from the yard and it's a really nice place to wake up in. So you'll also notice that we have some pompous leaves and some other dried eucalyptus. It's really nice to bring in natural elements into a bedroom, it just softens the space. And I was also going for that same sort of effect with the tables, just the natural wood slab. It's just a really nice organic feature. So you've seen all of the main space of the house where we live and entertain, but a girl's gotta have a space to work and you haven't seen that part yet, so let's go check that out. Last stop on our tour is my studio slash office space. It's a separate entrance from the rest of the main house, so it's a nice little cozy area I can call my own and have as my creative space. 
I just love it because I just went all out with stuff that I love. I did this blush paint throughout. Floating shelves in the monochromatic, same color as the walls. And there's just lots of fun little accents that are special to me and I got to, you know, just really have fun with this space. Thank you guys so much for coming on this tour with me. This was a long project that we put our hearts and souls into and I just appreciate you coming to see it and we'll catch you on the next one. Coming up just after the break, we check out the home of Grace Harry and Quest Love in New York's Financial District. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we are down in New York's Financial District with Grace Harry. She describes herself as a joy strategist, and that unique philosophy manifests itself in her apartment. See how. Hello, I'm Grace Harry, Joy Strategist, and welcome to my treehouse playhouse in the sky. So Joy Strategy is about unearthing your pleasure through play. So from the moment you walk in and you see the art, you realize you have to bring your play A game. So come on, play with me. So this is the cuddle puddle area of the treehouse in the sky. This is where we sit down and we get to know each other. This area is the fame area, so that's all about red. And you see that I have a, a giant citrine crystal over here, which is just soaking in and, and just leading out into the world that what we're putting into the world is love and just getting back to the juiciness of your birthright of joy. I highlighted and made the design focal point, this Uno apple. And then you have this Esther Malongo, who is an incredible South African artist. This is literally where I want to take, I do and take most meetings so that you just look at her art behind me the whole time. And then I love to play with light. I do a lot of things around the house where I just sometimes I get bored of the space. So I've got a red hole illumination happening here. A lot of fun books and toys there and I always find it very fascinating what a person chooses. It tells you a lot about where we're gonna go with the rest of the play date. A well-designed home, it's not just a beautiful home, it's also a home that you're comfortable in. And for me, that's what a well-designed home is all about. So this is a very important part of the space for me. This is my puzzle workshop. This is where I do vision boards. So then we brought the red of the red table to make the space feel open. Having things that feel expansive but still pulled together was important. I have marbles here. It also reminds me of a bunch of things because there's a lot of things that are symbolic. I have my Haas brothers. My marbles are very nicely put in my Haas brothers. Little tote here. I've been taking it back to like when life was simple. Limited time. Play a game, five minutes. You've got five minutes for yourself, right? And then I got this beautiful trampoline. And so I jump on it in the morning for my 30 minute dance tramp party so I can exercise and feel great, go crazy on this thing. And that's what this room's all about. So this playroom really is about closing the door to all distractions. This is the altar that I, I commune with. I go inside and really hear messages from my team and my guides and my ancestors and it's got flowers and things that I find lovely and just the ways that I connect to my own humanity divinity. This room is also particularly beautiful to look outside because you get all the bridges and from this view you can see many of them and it's also an interesting place because I was raised in Brooklyn so I love this idea of seeing my journey in different ways from looking. It's been a beautiful space for me to go in and work on my book. And this is really a moment for you. If you have two minutes and you can get in here and just dissolve all the way into it. And how much more filled up you feel when you give yourself that time. This is the bedroom in the playroom in the sky. And it was important for this room to be about feeling. So I wanted to still have our aesthetic, which is bright and colorful, which is not easy to find in bedding. So I took a white traditional duvet cover and shams and did my own purple bleach dye pattern on them to get a little bit more color in here. But then everything else really echoes going in, shutting it down, restoring. This beautiful barnacle planter I brought back from a flea market in California. 
black tourmaline removes negative energy and just bringing everything down to light materials and lighter woods and neutral colors so that we could bring it down to shut eye. And thank you for coming over and playing with me. And I hope you're inspired now too to live in your creativity and your birthright to joy. So thank you. Coming up after the break, we are heading to scenic Aspen, Colorado. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we are in beautiful Aspen, Colorado at a modern reimagining of Alpine living. This mountainside home features a mix of materials inside and out that both complement and contrast with its surroundings. We join the architect for a closer look. Greetings, my name is Scott Lindenauer, and I'm the design principal of Studio B Architects here in Aspen, Colorado, and welcome to the Glickman Residence. So this project was based in the case study series of the 1960s where architecture was reduced to its simplicity and its origins. The relationship of nature in Colorado, in particular in Aspen, where people live here to participate and be in the view rather than just look at the view is an important part of this project. As you approach this house from the neighborhood, you immediately see that it's quite different than the adjacent neighbors in both scale and form, its lines. It's horizontal in nature. We selected a color palette that was zinc and concrete. I used the two materials simply because to keep the architecture very simple. Less is more, as Mies van der Rohe would say. Once we come into the double height space and the entry stair, we arrive to the top floor, and from there, we see the connection from the house to the mountains. We captured the amazing natural light in this house by keeping the floor plan very simple, very open. One of the things that was very important to us in this project was to have floor to ceiling glass so that the ceilings and the floors just seem to flow out into nature. So you'll see in the interior color palette, it's more of a gray and white tones. The marble wall that you see when you enter the front where the fireplace is, is an anchor piece that pulls you up to this floor and then that ties into the kitchen and the consistent material throughout the house. The dash of color, particularly orange, the client really loved, and this house being more of a backdrop for the art, the color in the furniture served as like a little punch for the interiors. There's also a wraparound glass deck in the front of the house. We can go out there and take a peek and then have a cocktail glass of wine for later in the evening. At the bottom of the stairs, you're greeted by the extensive wine cellar that has up to 3,000 bottles of storage. In keeping consistent with the architecture, we use the aluminum system for the bottles, and it's lit with inside, and it's cool as well. At the opposite side from the wine cellar, we see the sitting area with the large paintings. Again, another pop of color that relates to the upper level. So now that we've seen the lower level sanctuary, let's go upstairs and see the hidden terrace. Well, one of the beautiful things about the rear terrace is the house and the natural landscape embraces it so it forms this outdoor room. From the terrace here, you see the lush green, the grass, it softens the architecture. And a final note to this design piece, we add a rooftop terrace that really brings Aspen into the forefront and you see it in all its glory. You're surrounded by mountains, nature, and as the seasons change, so does your experience. It feels like you're on top of the world. Thanks for joining me today on this tour of the house, and I hope you enjoy the work. And now it's time for me to go out and enjoy the view. Coming up after the break, we bring it back to New York City for a look at this distinct architectural townhouse on the Upper East Side. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back everyone, now we're on New York's Upper East Side to check out this townhouse designed from the ground up by architect Stephen Harris. This sun-filled home is luxurious yet inviting with its open entertaining spaces, high ceilings and design details that make each area feel unique. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Ileana Lopez Balboa and welcome to this palatial townhouse in the heart of the Upper East Side. I promise you, every inch of this six-story, 7,000-square-foot home will impress you. 
It was designed and built just a few years ago by famed architect Stephen Harris. And one of his major themes was to make this townhouse feel like it's been here for 100 years, yet still completely modern. And this combination between the modern and the traditional can be seen in the facade, with its huge casement windows and decorative column details. This design theme also continues as you enter the garden floor. But the home really comes alive when you come up the stairs to this floor. Let's start in the middle with this dining area, which can easily seat 14 people. But I particularly love this mid-century inspired accent wall that cascades light throughout. And speaking of light, you're surrounded by it with these huge casement windows on both sides. And this den is a perfect place to host or just unwind. Whether cozying up to a fire in the winter or taking things outside, especially when it's warm and sunny. This lovely terrace overlooks a garden and is in fact one of the home's three outdoor spaces. Let's head upstairs, shall we? Up here is the more formal living room, but like everything else in this home, it feels relaxed and welcoming. The owners wanted everything to have a vibe of a Tribeca loft, but with hints of traditional uptown elegance in things like the moldings and the wide plank floors. I love this serene window banquette that overlooks the garden. And speaking of serene, there's even a library on this floor, which is currently configured as the cutest little nursery. Cute, right? Now let's go see the main bedroom. The owner's suite takes up this entire floor and includes a marble spa-like bathroom, a double dressing room, and this dreamy bedroom. This is a kind of room that makes you feel like you're part of nature and the city. And our last area happens to do that too. Follow me. This north-south roof terrace is one of those perfect only in New York spaces. And it happens to be the perfect place to end this tour. I really hope you enjoyed taking a look at this modern take on a traditional townhouse. Thanks for joining me. Coming up in just a few, we are heading out west to Santa Monica to check out this chic loft space with its designer. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. We are wrapping things up in sunny Santa Monica, California with designer Jessica Iromlu. Jessica embraced an industrial look using reclaimed and repurposed materials and items, but also brought in a fun youthful vibe with eye-catching color and pattern throughout. Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Iromalu Interior Design here in Santa Monica, California at my Marine Street Loft Project. It's a fun open floor plan that was inspired by the eclectic community of Santa Monica and Venice. It's such a fun project, let's get started. As you walk through the front door, you're greeted by a bright orange color blocked space. It's fun and unexpected and creates a standalone space for the entry itself. Moving forward, you'll find a fun, graphic, and colorful mud room where you can sit down, take your shoes off, hang your hat, or drop the wet beach towels. Covering the windows are perforated metal privacy screens with overlaid patterns accentuated by light shining through. Just beyond the mud room, we land in the dining area. This space revolves around a massive French oak reclaimed table. It features a custom banquette that I had built for the space, opposite vintage chairs that we found while shopping locally. The upholstery on the dining room chairs are original, which I typically don't keep, but in this case, it worked, so why change it? The chandeliers above were custom designed, made from antique repurposed megaphones. This adds yet another unexpected quirk element to the home, which is something my clients wanted. Another piece I have to mention, just off to the side, is a bar featuring a reclaimed wood post. I made it my own by adding a streak of neon light running parallel up to the ceiling. This room is unique and whimsical, much like the neighborhood, and when it's time to relax, everyone spills into the family room. 
Here you'll find two different seating areas. The first is perfect for a meeting or a formal conversation. The second is an informal space where you can kick your feet up and watch TV. One of the coolest features is the wallpaper I designed. It's panels of linen, hand silk screened, with a logo design using my client's initials. Off to the side is a spare bedroom that was built for my client's grandchildren. It's small and sweet, hence the cherry wallpaper. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour. I'm very fond of this project because it's vibrant, much like the Southern California lifestyle. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. How about love? Share these homes, you know?